Hello, I'm Mary from the Brunswick Library and welcome to another Create with the Library. This week we're going to talk about gardening and about herbs. And, well, I love to garden, but I'm no expert. I'm just the crazy lady down the street who enjoys gardening and is cheap. I can admit it, I am. So, herbs appeal to me. Herbs are a great way of growing your own produce and not having to spend money at the grocery store. You've got perennial herbs like this thyme or the chives. They're going to come back every year. A couple bucks you spend on a plant will be repaid a thousand. Sorry about that airplane. They fly over all the time. What else we have? We have annuals. So we have to pay a couple bucks every year to be able to plant basil or sage. It's all right. I get enough every year to not only supply my house, but my two sons as well. They're always excited to see mom coming with a bag of dried herbs. Yeah, maybe not. But you can get a lot of herbs out of a very small investment and there's all kinds of wonderful things that you can do with them. The first thing we're going to be talking about is to be able to make a wonderful chai vinegar out of the blossoms from the chai plant. Now you can see that my chives have kind of done it for this year in terms of blossoms, but every spring they put out a new lovely purple blossom, you can see it here. And if you fill a jar with these, you'll make something really special. So take any old jar that you have, fill it with the, with the blossoms. You have to make sure you have enough of them. So this is an earlier spring project. Cover your blossoms with plain old fashioned white vinegar. Don't need anything special for this. Let it sit on your on your windowsill for a couple of days to a week. I usually do mine for about a week so that they can truly steep. And you will have at the end of that week lovely pink oniony light vinegar, which is a wonderful accent to any salad. Very easy to do. No recipe required. Straight out of your garden. I've got a couple other pieces of sage wisdom for you, get that herb joke, uh, about collecting your herbs. And one of them is it's a good idea to collect them early in the morning. You've got better uh, amount of aromatic oils in the herbs, so you're going to get the maximum amount of flavor if you collect them in the morning. But what if you aren't using them until tonight for dinner? So just pop your herbs in some water, just like you would with flowers. Put them in the refrigerator. They'll be ready for you, fresh as they were this morning, if you uh, pop them in the fridge and keep them in there. Another way to preserve herbs, well, maybe you're not going to be using them tonight. Maybe you want to have them in your spice jar, in your cupboard, ready to use next fall. Well, then you need to dry your herbs. And there are a couple of ways to do that. Uh, you have really three ways of doing it. You either uh, air dry them, you heat dry them, or you cool dry them. So with something like rosemary, which is a woody herb, that will dry on your counter no problem. But also another easy way to dry things is to bundle them and let them air dry hanging upside down. I don't like to do that with cooking herbs because as they dry, the stems will dry as well, and then they fall out of your little band, whatever's holding them together. But it works great for decorative herbs like this lavender. So you can tie that up, hang it upside down in your basement, and when you're ready to use them in a month or so, they'll be lovely and dry. And they'll maintain that beautiful purple flavor. Uh, color 
these are probably, well, they're from last summer, so they're probably nine months old and they still have a lovely color. Another way to dry herbs is to cold dry them. I love it for chives. Chives, if you dry either with heat or air dry, will lose that pretty green color and will become brown and rather ugly looking. So if you cold dry them just by rinsing them off, cutting them into itty bitty little pieces. And if no one has told you about using your kitchen shears, the ones that you can throw in the dishwasher and wash uh, for cutting herbs, then they've done you a disservice because that's definitely the easiest way. So cut them into little bitty pieces, pop them in the refrigerator, eh, kind of stir them around maybe once a day. And within two to three days, these will be dry and papery, ready to use in your soups and stews, and they'll maintain that lovely green color. Another easy, easy way to dry your herbs is to heat dry them. Just pop them in a uh, oven that's been preheated to 200 degrees and turn that heat off. Easy as pie. Let them sit in there as long as you like with the heat off. Whenever you get to it, you can then take those herbs and roll them between your fingers and you can see that the little bitty leaves, they will just roll right off the stems and be ready to pop into your your jar of dried herbs. Now there's one other thing that you can use your herbs for, of course, another way to preserve them, and I'll show you that. Another plant that I like to grow are garlic. Garlic is so easy to grow. Just take a healthy bulb, break it apart into the individual cloves, plant it in the fall and in the spring, come on up, harvest it in the midsummer, and you've got a bounty of garlic to cook with through the winter. In between planting and harvesting, the plant produces a scape. The scapes are these lovely little things. The very tip are the seeds, and you know, if the plant is busy working on producing more seeds, it's not going to be busy making that bulb that's in the ground that I want to cook with bigger and more luscious. So you want to cut these off, but don't throw them away. There are lots of wonderful things that you can do with garlic scapes. But today we're going to be making a pesto. Now, pestos are generally associated with basil, but the term is broadened and now can include all kinds of herbs. Generally, you have five different things going into your pesto. You have the herb itself, you have some sort of acid, usually lemon juice, cheese, nuts, often pine nuts, but pine nuts are really expensive. And I have these available in the cupboard. They're sliced almonds, so I'm going to use almonds and then of course olive oil and salt and vinegar to taste. We're going to be taking those lovely garlic scapes that I showed you. I have cut them, blanched them, so boil them in boiling water for maybe a minute, minute and a half, very short amount of time, and then take the blanched scapes and put them directly into an ice bath. That'll stop that cooking process. Now you've got something, you can see the color of those are beautiful. This is the raw scape that hasn't been blanched and you can see the color is lovely with them blanched. It also mellows the flavor of the garlic and sweetens it and makes it a little bit easier to grind into your pesto. You want to start by grinding your herb first, whatever your toughest ingredient is. In this case, it is going to be the scape. You're going to be putting that into your blender and pulsing that a few times until you get a nice paste. You may need to stop and scrape down the sides with a, with a spatula a couple times. You may need to put in some olive oil to make it a little bit uh, more, more fluid, uh, but uh, a couple of, couple of pulses with your blender and you start getting a nice green paste. Once you have the scapes 
down to a nice paste, and it will take a little bit, they are a little bit fibrous, you can start adding your other ingredients. Now, I wish I had a lovely recipe for you. I can tell you, you want to put in exactly this much in the way of nuts and this much in the way of cheese. And now I'm afraid um, I'm a big believer in throwing it in there and seeing how it tastes and then adjusting from there. So I've got my scapes in the blender little bit of olive oil that I'm putting in right now, the cheese, the lemon juice, and the almonds. And I'm gonna give that a whirl and we'll see how we like that. Once you're done whirling together your pesto and you've got some flavors that you enjoy, pop it into an ice cube tray and put that in the freezer and then you'll have the taste of summer all year round. I've listed some resources below as well as links to some, some recipes and other ideas on how you can use your herbs. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Create with the Library. Please be sure to like this video and subscribe to the Library YouTube channel for more new content every week. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mary Baker with the Brunswick Library.